Yes, it's the 365 Hosts F1000 Championship with support from BuildItFinance.com. Uh, this weekend, third and final race of the weekend for these cars. And it is a grid set by the fastest lap times from yesterday's race. So a quick story of the weekend so far. Race one, it was won by Matthew Booth from Dan Clues and Lee Morgan. Uh, Lee Morgan then getting his 28th win in F1000 uh, yesterday, beating Rob Wellham by nine tenths of a second uh, with Matthew Booth, the race one winner, the former Sports Special Sports Specials champion in third place. I can see one or two uh, gaps, well I think actually one gap on the grid down here and so I don't see Mark Betts, the number 88 car out there this time I'm afraid to say. Mark Betts a newcomer to uh, F1000 uh, this weekend but he was a retirement from the second of the races yesterday so that might explain that. 32nd board goes up, these cars all of course on slick tyres and they're powered by 1000cc motorcycle engines about to go off on their green flag lap. Adam Walker keen to get going, the number 14 car. He had issues getting off the line in both of the races, uh, I seem to recall yesterday, so possibly he's keen to avoid a repeat of that. So off they go on their green flag lap, 2.1 miles off this cross circuit, and then it'll be a straight 15 minute race here at Croft. And we will take a look at the grid. Here we go then. Whole position this time goes to Matthew Booth, who's had a good weekend so far. Rob Wellham looking for his first win of the weekend. He's had a good comeback after starting the first race in the pit lane yesterday. Lee Morgan and Rhys Lysett on the second row of the grid. Lysett returning to the scene of his debut last year. Dan Gore and Dan Clues make it an all down at row three. Paul Butcher and Alok Yengar are on the fourth row of the grid. Paul Butcher had problems yesterday. Row five, you've got Adam Walker and Rob Bailey. Mark Betts, as I say, missing from row six, but Andrew Wheels is there in the perpetual motorsport car. Al Rhodes and Matthew Manette are on the seventh row of the grid. Peter Legg, the only invitation class driver, is alongside Christopher Hill. Look at the last couple of rows, Dan Levy and Ed Falkingham. They both were excluded from the results of yesterday's race for various technical infringements. Dax Ward and Elliot Mitchell round out the 20 cars on the grid. So championship-wise, coming into this one, Josh, uh, we've had a change since uh, we got here yesterday morning in that Matthew Booth has taken the lead of the points. Yeah, the top three have actually taken the complete reverse around from coming into the weekend. It was Butcher ahead of Clues and Booth. Now it's Booth ahead of Clues and Butcher. Matthew Booth with those two podium finishes, a first and a third yesterday. Now 146 points, eight points clear of Dan Clues, who we saw on the podium in the opener yesterday in the wet race. And Paul Butcher, who's had a pretty poor weekend, he's not been in the top ten in any race. He's actually only been on the once on the podium all year. That was the second race at Brands Hatch, the reverse grid race there. So Paul Butcher will uh, be looking to move forward um, from row four. So we had the pace in yesterday's race, the lap times from yesterday, the best lap times from yesterday set the grid for this one. Um, and we had a pit stop, didn't we, for Butcher yesterday. So hopefully all that his issues have been resolved and we might see him move forward and score good points. Further back, in fourth in the championship is Dan Gore, fifth is Rob Wellham and in sixth position is Reese Lysett. It's a single-seater race in at Croft about to get underway. In. Yeah, it's worth saying Elliot Mitchell isn't there on the back of the grid either, so that's a couple of non-starters that we have, unfortunately, by the looks of it. So we're ready and set for a 15-minute race around Croft with on pole position Matthew Booth. Number 65 alongside him, number five, Rob Wellham. Lights go on then, and out they go. And it's a great start by the pole position man, Matthew Booth, by the looks of it. Not a great start from uh, Rob Wellham from second on the grid. It looks like Lee Morgan, yesterday's second race winner, already nosing ahead of him as they head down towards Clervo corner at the first time. Wellham, though, tries to go around the outside at Clervo. You've got to uh, re-slice it there, number 17 in fourth. Dan Clues is in fifth place. Going wide there is Wellham, number five at Hawthorne, so he does drop back a little bit. He's lost a little bit of ground from that front row start. There's the number 80 car, the black and red metal racing cars entered machine of Dan Gore as they streak down the back straight towards Tower Corner for the first time. Matthew Booth has a bit of a gap over the rest of them. Dan Clues there trying to make up ground or trying to keep Paul Butcher at bay as they turn their way out of Tower Corner towards Jim Clark Essence for the first time. Booth it is in the lead. And here is the battle of a third position, Rob Wellham, who lost a couple of positions at the start, trying to get back past Reese Lysett. And he dives up the inside into Sonny. He gets a big, big slide on. They tangle. They both go off. They both spin to the infield. 
Oh dear. <laughs> it was very spectacular the first half of the lap. You really saw the pace increase. These cars are so quick. The one litre motorcycle engines in these Jedi racing cars in the F1000 Championship. But as Rob Wellham tried to gain time after that poor start, and it just went all wrong up at there at Sunny as he tangled with Reese Lysett. Both cars now much further back. Yeah, absolutely. So I think probably the two youngest drivers on the grid there getting together up at Sunny. It did kind of look like that might happen on the way into the corner, didn't it? But all that means then is that Matthew Booth is leading, Lee Morgan is second place. And then there's quite a big gap then to the third place car of that man. Number two, Dan Clues, runner up last year. Paul Butcher, number 42, is in fourth place at the moment on set for his strongest result of the weekend so far. The Indian driver, Alok Yengar, fifth, and Dan Gore in sixth position. Lysett came across the line in 12th place and Wellham came across the line in ninth. So the point of interest in this race now is seeing how far they can get back up the field. But side by side for fifth position is Dan Gore in the Mattel cars run. Jedi tries to come round the outside of Alok Inagar but can't do it. Inagar maybe run a bit wide. No, looks like he's carried decent speed out of there. Potentially better speed from Gore. It was. He looks to the inside through the Jim Clark S's. Unable to go through there though. Now on to Barcroft they go and up towards Sunny. We haven't even had two minutes of this race yet and we've almost completed two laps. The pace of these cars is phenomenal. We saw a new lap record go yesterday in the hands of Matt Booth. They may go even quicker today, Ian. Yeah, it was a 1.18.21 that was the uh, the new lap record. That was in the second race of the day for these cars once uh, conditions had dried out a little bit. Here they come then through to complete the second lap. There you can see Rob Wellham, number five, as he aims to recover after his problems yesterday and already we've gone fast so Matthew Booth in a 117.79 which is nearly half a second already faster than he managed yesterday so that's a very special effort from Matthew Booth the driver from Huddersfield uh, and I suppose he has got the clear air to be able to do it at the moment Josh at least we're watching at the minute the battle a bit further back down the order that's between 67 which is Andrew Wheels who's going pretty well here and number 27 Al Rhodes as you say he was going pretty well he did a massive twitch through Clairvaux but he saved it so that was all fine the side by side action just popping out a shot this is a fifth position it's a replay almost of the previous lap once again Dan Gore goes to the outside of Alok Inyagar who takes the defensive line but this time a much better run off the corner from Dan Gore so he's completely alongside as they go on to the Jim Clark S he tries to sweep round the outside and get Dan Gore he's done it a great move round the outside of the beginning of the Jim Clark S that came from the inside for the right hander through he goes into fifth place for Dan Gore Inyagar looks to the inside at Sunny and will reclaim pitcher. No, Dan Gore goes across the front of his bow, but catching them both is Rob Wellham. Yes, Rob Wellham, the 17-year-old uh, from Ipswich in Suffolk, catching those two now as they come down into the complex, and he thinks about looking at number 44, Alec Yengar, but decides better of it. I think he was quite late on the brakes, got out of shape a little bit as they came into the braking area for the second part of the complex. Out of the hairpin they now come, so Wellham back to seventh place. How much further up the order can he get? He's going to try and attack the Engar, no doubt, as they go down towards Clervo Corner at the start of lap number four. Is he close enough to do it? Oh, he's done it, but he's out of shape again. The Engar almost has to take evasive action there. And well, um, <laughs> you can't accuse him of not trying. <laughs> it was a spectacular move. The car was pointing towards the tyre stack on the inside of the corner. That didn't put him off, though. Just chucked it into the corner. Went through up to sixth now, then for Rob Wellham. Here we go in after Dan Gore as they make their way up towards Tower Bend on this lap four already of this 15-minute race around the cross circuit. Good battle here, just coming out of the chicane. That was Dax Ward just ahead of Peter Lake, uh, Daniel Levy and Matthew Minette. They were all battling for 13th, but coming out of Tower Bend there, we could see Rob Bailey. He is in eighth position. Behind him is Reese Lysett, who's trying to recover uh, I think actually Lysett might have got past Bailey now. So that was Andrew Wills just coming through in 11th place. So Rice, Reese Lysett recovering inside the top ten. There is Peter Lake. He last raced here at Croft over 50 years ago in the British Saloon Car Championship in a mini. Racing against the likes of John Rhodes and John Whitmore. A very different car this and a very different circuit Croft is nowadays. They turn right here. This isn't what Peter Lake would have done 50 years ago. No, they'd have been heading off down the railway straight uh, last time. Uh, Peter Lake was here, but he's going pretty well. 14th place overall in his invitation class car. Let's watch uh, Eddie Falkingham come through in number 69, the driver that's made the switch to F1000 this weekend from the KTEC Racing Clear 182 Championship. Christopher Hill, the last of the runners, in 18th position. Uh, Dax Ward there was going over the line with Daniel Levy and Peter Lake. There's been a bit of a switch round in the order there. Lake now back to 15th position behind Levy. Watch number 21. That's uh, Matthew Minette going through his first season in race, but he's been cutting since 2013. We've got one off. 
Yes, it's gone into the tyre wall too, hasn't it? So that's uh, there. It's br broken rear suspension from that too. Just pick that up on our pit lane camera there. Broken the left right corner, and I fear it may be Matthew Minette who you just mentioned, but can't confirm that at the moment. The driver out of the car, so he is okay and walks towards the marshals behind the barriers. The British marshal. British Marshall Motorsport Club there, you can see on the Marshall's overalls. And I think the driver more disappointed than anything. There is Peter Lake. And we've got the safety car out. Yes, yeah, the safety car heads out, yellow flags out. There's Lake, no, it wasn't Manette, so he is still there. It's somebody from that battle, though, I believe. Yeah, we'll try, we'll try and pick that up in a moment as they come through on the timing screen. So the race will be neutralised with Matthew Booth leading, Lee Morgan in second place, Dan Clues third. Paul Butcher, fourth, Dungall, fifth, Rob Wellham, sixth. I think it might be Dax Ward. It was just in front of that battle between Lake and Manette. And it does look maybe from this distance a little bit like his car too. So Dax Ward, um, I believe that is, off there at Clairvaux. Just out, so out of our camera shop below the uh, tyre wall. There is the 750 Motor Club safety car, the Renault Megane. Makes its way with these F1000 cars behind. Matthew Booth's lead there for Ian of around three seconds comes right down to nothing. And Dan Clues, who is even further back, mm. well, everybody bunched right up again. So anything you've taken out of your tyres now to get away all goes down to naught. Yeah, it's really going to set this up nice for the second half of the race. And we are pretty much at the halfway point now, such so under seven and a half minutes left to go. It shouldn't be too long uh, before we get back underway because there was already a snatch vehicle on the scene to recover the car of Dax Ward from the gravel trap and the barriers at Clairvaux Corner. You can see the lap times all the drivers have done on your screens at the moment. So, what, majority of the top 10 all lapping under 1 minute 20. Matthew Booth, the only driver in the 17s on 117.79, whereas the five chasers all in the 18s and fairly evenly paced. I wonder what, what Rob Wellham can do in these final stages, whether he can pick some places off. What about... Um, Reese Lysett, who we come into contact with, he is in ninth. So sixth for Wellham, ninth for Lysett. So watch out for the pair of them. The recovery continues in, so I suspect we may have a further lap of safety car period before the, fir the third and final race of the weekend for the F1000 cars can continue. We've got three further meetings of the championship to go. We go to Cadwell Park next in the middle of July. That's going to be spectacular, isn't it? These cars around Cadwell Park as they leap over the mountain um, there. And that would be a perfect circuit to show how quick these cars are through Hall Bends, I yeah. think, would be a, a mighty place to watch that. So head to Cadwell Park next month if you can um, for the 750 Motor Club meeting. That will be a packed meeting of sprint racing. Um, an F1000 part of that. Safety car lights are still on, although the circuit is now clear. The medical car, though, is now on track just to attend to the driver. So the circuit's clear of cars, but not necessarily clear of drivers. And Dax, therefore, will uh, get into the medical car, being taken off to the medical centre to get checked, as is uh, absolutely uh, usual in these conditions. Uh, we hope, of course, that he is OK. So I think we'll probably just get the one more lap under the safety car. We've got five and a half minutes left to go, so we've got three levers something like three three and a half minutes i would think while the safety car what's on the safety car comes through again so we might get another two or three laps out of it all being well so the safety car continues to lead them out so matthew booth it is that leads of course in that uh, that number 65 car he's made his debut this season in this championship he's an engineer and also finishing off a degree at the same time as that part time 2016 sports specials champion of course uh, one class a so he was the runner-up in Class A last year. He's been karting for 10 years. He started car racing in low cost, which we'll see earlier on. We'll see again very shortly in 2014. So that's Booth Lee Morgan, number 56 in second place. The man from Telford works for Cryozone Health. Did a part season last year, finished 10th, but he was the champion back in 2013. Runner-up in 2015, third in 2012 as well. Uh, 27 wins up until yesterday. He made it 28 in the... 365 hosts F1000 Championship. Dan Clues, number two, from Newcastle under Lyme in Staffordshire, 45 years old, the control systems engineer running under the JFK Racing banner. Second in the championship last year, had a win at Croft in the rain. Started racing uh, in supercars, 125 supercars back in 1994, so it's his 25th anniversary season 
of racing. Now, I think the safety car lights have gone off. You can certainly see the green flag being prepared at the start line, so we should be good to get racing again shortly. Paul Butcher, of course, uh, 49 years old from Cambridge, uh, fifth in the championship last year, second though in 2016 and 2017. He's been racing in F1000 for a long time, but he's never actually won the championship and was leading it, of course, coming into this weekend. Now lies third, he's fourth on the road at the moment. Safety car then is about to pull into the pit lane and we are going to get a restart for, well, it still says about five minutes, so not, yeah, about three and a half minutes, which is what I thought as the green flag waves. And the race gets back underway then, and immediately it looked like uh, Lee Morgan was going to try and challenge Matthew Booth, strike while he can, before Booth can get away again. There the fourth place car, Paul Butcher was pushing very hard, and number 14, Adam Walker going off through the gravel trap. He's gone all the way through it and able to rejoin there without really losing too much in the way of time. So it's Booth that continues to lead from Morgan and Clues, second and third. The cars blast their way down towards Tower Bend and Lee Morgan right on the, underneath the rear wing of the race leader, Matthew Booth. Matthew Booth, the former sports specials champion. Um, he, after doing karting, he moved into that category racing kit cars. He's also raced a XBTCC Vauxhall Astra, but Matthew Booth making his debut in single seaters this season and had already taken a couple of victories. He won last time out at Silverstone and he won the race first race yesterday good battle here though for fourth place Paul Butcher who made that mistake earlier coming under pressure from Dan Gore and Rob Wellham who runs out wide two wheels out over the grass and where's and yes there's been a change there hasn't it because he's got ahead of Dan Gore so Rob yes. Wellham gained a place on that lap despite running a bit wide there he held on to fifth position and a dive there at the inside from Alok Inyagar Dan Gore may lose two places before the end of the lap he does he may lose three places by the end of this lap he does Reese Lysett now goes through yeah so I'm interested to see what Rob Wellham can do here he's up to fifth place now and look at this it's three cars right together and it's Lysett up the inside of Yengar there and so he goes up to sixth place now so he was back down and I think uh, what was it, 12th position, wasn't it, after that spin on the opening lap of the race, that the tangle with Rob Wellham. He's back up to 6th now, Wellham up to 5th position. Wellham, though, is not far from attacking Paul Butcher now, down into Tower Corner, has a look up the inside, and is he going to make it through? Yes, I think he is. So Wellham goes up to P4 now, he's got a little bit of a gap here to try and catch up on Dan Clues. The gap between them probably around about two seconds I would say and we've got one minute 47 seconds left to go so probably this and one more lap. The back end stepped out from the car Peter Leg has gone off now as well in the same place where Dax Ward did so Peter Leg out of the car as well uh, but walking away from his yellow but yeah, as I was uh, describing Rob Wellham back end and breaking away under brake as he breaks so late he saved it sideways into corner sort of motorcycle style which I guess is pretty fitting for cars that have motorcycle engines and Rob Wellham pushing on, but yellow flags now down there at and Clairvaux. And the checkered flag is made ready, possibly unsurprisingly, and it goes out to Matthew Booth, who takes the win in round number eight of the 365 Host F1000 Championship. The flag going out a little bit early with that car off in a dangerous position at Clairvaux Corner. Lee Morgan taking second place, Dan Clues third, Rob Wellham in fourth, Paul Butcher fifth, Reese Lysett in sixth place, so we didn't really get the chance for uh, Rob Wellham and Reese Lysett to make up any more places. Alok Yengar seventh, Head of Dan Gore, they had a pretty much race-long battle, didn't they? Adam Walker took 9th, Rob Bailey 10th, uh, Andrew Wheels 11th, Dan Levy 12th, Matthew Minnett 13th, 13th, Falkium 14th, Chris Hill 15th, I think Al Rhodes, the last driver to come through with Peter Legg and Dax Ward, both having entered their races in the Clairvaux tie wall. Al Rhodes, a much slower last lap, so an incident of some description, but he managed to make it to the end. But Matthew Boo, the first driver to win three races, this season in the F1000 Championship. He won at Silverstone and both times here, um, at, or two out of the three times here at Croft, the, both times in the non-reverse grid races. So Matthew Booth absolutely flying this season in the F1000 Championship. Yes, so uh, Booth going very well indeed, extending his lead in the Championship then going into that next round at Cadwell. And again, that's another relatively local circuit for the band from Huddersfield. Uh, Lee Morgan, they're showing much improved form this weekend. Uh, been good to see that from him, the man who's uh, been champion in the past. But that's more to do with fixing car issues rather mm. than driver, yeah. anything with a driver, I think. So Lee Morgan right on the pace this weekend where we would expect him to be, on, much, like, much like Matt Booth on the podium each time out. 
uh, I guess a bit of a frustrating weekend for, for Rob Wellham all in all because he did come into this weekend fifth in the championship and he probably will uh, sixth in the championship he was fifth overnight and probably will stay roughly there with his points all from today but it it was a weekend that promised a bit more than that although it, it could have been worse mm. where he where the car had problems in qualifying I guess the one that's really lost out was championship leader coming to Croft Paul Butcher although he'd only actually had the one podium he still only has had the one podium but kind of saved his weekend with a top five finish to conclude the season but prior to that it's uh, not been a good weekend for championship leader before the weekend Paul Butcher there's Matthew Booth the race winner here in the F1000 championship for the third time in 2019 the first year the F1000s have been with the 750 motor club Yes, indeed. So we've got uh, Matthew Booth climbing out of his car, as well as the second and third place finishers, uh, Lee Morgan and Dan Close, getting the gloves off, getting the helmet off. He'll get a garland as a victory as well. He's getting a good collection of those now. Uh, and so we'll hear from Matthew Booth in just a moment. He's about to talk to Andy McEwen. Well, Matthew Booth, congratulations. Uh, another race win. You extend the championship lead. Uh, you could have done without that safety car, though. Yeah, I, I was a bit worried when that came out because Lee's unbelievable on breaks down into tower and he's, uh, well, he's a previous champion, so he's, uh, he's not one to get complacent with. So when that safety car came out, I just knew I had to try and get a good break from the airpin. Um, I sort of misjudged it a bit at first, but then, yeah, it was all right. I'd, and, uh, yeah, it went quite well. Yeah, happy. These triple header weekends are quite busy, aren't they? And you've got to sort of manage your weekend, haven't you? And you've had a really good weekend. Yeah, they're flat out all, all the way from Thursday, really. Um, yeah, testing and qualifying. And yesterday were hectic, um, especially with all these weather changes. That didn't make it easy. So, yeah, it's been good. I've, I think we've, me, Dad and Tony have done a good job here. So, yeah, it's been all right. New lap record holder as well, I believe. Oh, well, I, I saw me uh, dash, I got a 117 something, but um, I didn't know if anybody else had got it, but yeah, that's uh, nice to know. Thanks. Well done. Congratulations then. So extending his championship lead is uh, Matthew Booth. Lee Morgan comes home in second place. And uh, Lee, Matthew was just saying he was a bit worried about how good you were under breaking to Hannah Tower. Yeah, I know on the restart, I uh, I tried to stay as close as I could and he was just, oh, I don't know, I didn't have the front tyres really to stay with him through... Uh, going onto the back straight then uh, yeah I must have pulled maybe four or five car lines doing the strip slips rebound there and uh, I was tempted I knew he wasn't as good on the brakes as me and I thought it's going to be too big a lunge to go for it now and uh, when that chance went it was just a case of just settling for second then and just uh, hoping he made some sort of mistake but uh, obviously he drove well all weekend you know he's gone three races so uh, you know we come away with first, second and third so it's uh, it's ten times better than what we came away from uh, for Antarch with so yeah good weekend overall. Championship-wise, I guess you can almost forget about Brands Hatch because of drop scores, but you can't afford another bad weekend, can you? No, I mean, for me coming here this weekend, it was more, you know, the championships kind of our reach, really, unless, you know, people start having a lot of problems. Um, all we can do is just keep putting points on the board, you know, see where we are when we get to the final round and hit to the chance, you know. I mean, we've seen it before. I think, uh, I think Candy Dunn went into the final race with, like, a 50-odd point lead and he uh, came away without winning the championship. So, uh, you know, anything can happen and uh, we'll just keep going. The championship's in rude health at the moment and you're someone who's fairly well qualified to, to comment on that because you know a thing or two about F1000 racing. Yeah. It's as good as ever, isn't it, right now? Oh, I'd say it's probably the best championship year we've had by far. I mean, you know, I think anyone in the top eight could literally win a race, you know, given the reverse grids. So, um, you know, a couple of years back, you'd be maybe looking at a top three, maybe top four. But now, now anything now, like down to eight, even... Even further than that, really, is you know the grids are so tight, especially if you go to a circuit like Brands Hatch, Silverstone National, where it's not a long lap and it's not too technical. You know the whole grids that you're within a second. So yeah, it's uh, it's come a long way in the last year or so. So uh, yeah, we've got to keep pushing even harder again now to try and win races because there's just so many more competitors to uh, to take it away from you, which makes it all the more exciting for us. Thank you very much, Lee. Congratulations on the second place and Dan Clues uh, back on the podium again this weekend. Dan, um, it's not been a bad three races for you here at Croft, has it? No, it's been a great three races to be honest. The, the circuits mega. I always love coming here, uh, and the guys at JFK have put a top top car together this weekend. We still just chasing set up a little bit, but nothing nothing too major. Apart from that, it's not Mr. Beat, so really happy with third. Do you echo, I'm sure you do echo, uh, Lee's sentiments about the championship right now? It's so competitive and it's harder to win than ever now. It is. You turn up at a meeting at the moment and you go, you can be, you can be on your best pace and be 10th, 12th even. It's, it's, it's really tough. And, and 
but it's that's better for the sport, better for the whole thing. It's you'd much rather win in a great big field of people rather than winning in a field of four or five. And that means that if you can go to the end of the season in contention for the title, it will be all the sweeter. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, obviously Matt's had a cracking weekend with a, a couple of wins and, and wherever he was in the other one. Uh, so he sort of pulled a bit of a gap on us now. But I think we're comfortably second. Uh, but yeah, we're only halfway through. There's plenty of time to go yet. Looking forward to the rest of the season. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Can't wait. So there you go then. Congratulations to our final podium finishers then in the 365 host F1000 Championship here at Croft with Dan Clues, Lee Morgan and Matthew Booth, Booth excuse me, proving tough to beat at the moment. Will he continue that form next time? Well, more racing on its way now then as the wind picks up and the clouds are starting to gather again. Back to you, Ian and Josh in the box.